Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about my my guava collecting and guava breeding project. This is the very early stages, so I'm just going to talk about what my goals are and where I'm at right now. Um, so I've started collecting both seeds and uh, small seedling plants of both Cidium genus guavas. So that's the typical guavas that most people buy and eat. Um, and then some related genera like Ugni, the Chilean guava, which is, is lesser known, but is starting to become popular. Um, and you can find it more in nurseries because the fruits are supposed to be fantastic. I haven't really tried anything but the Cidium genus guavas. <clears throat> But that's this one here, that's the Chilean guava. The leaves are very shiny, I just spray for aphids. So that's one thing I'm learning. If you're growing indoors, expect a little bit of aphids uh, infestations. Uh, this is Murdiola, Murdiola pneumolaria. Um, so I think this is a, I'm trying to think of the other name, I think it's cranberry myrtle. Um, another uh, fruit producing, that's the idea is I'm gonna be making some hybrid crosses between these different species and different genera to try to create some new flavors and some new um, characteristics. I think it'd be really interesting. And this one, I've only had it for a few weeks, but it appears that it's already starting to flower. You can see these little, see if I can zoom in there, these blossoms. So if I had, this would be a stage that, you know, I could go in and potentially um, emasculate the flower and make a cross, add some pollen in there, but I don't really have any pollen to, to work with. But it's good to know that this one's already ready to flower. There's a couple other uh, blossoms ready to go. Um, let's see what else we want to talk about here. Um, I've got ones that I'm starting. Oh, let's actually take a look at the other species that I have that are growing currently. So I've got a large red Malaysian guava. So this would be the Cidium guavaje. Um, and I'm only really including the cultivars that I've, I've heard are really great um, eating for eating fresh. So uh, the red Malaysian guava, um, I'm looking to get the lemon guava and also the Ruby Supreme. So I wanna work with those, those cultivars uh, as parents in the crosses with some other species and other genera. So this one should certainly flower this year. I flowered a little bit last year, but maybe I'll even be able to get a fruit off of it this year. It's in a pot and I'm gonna bring it outside uh, once it starts to warm up. It's kind of, I'm in zone nine here and it's very cold and rainy right now in, in January. Uh, this is a Feijoa, which I probably won't include. There was a paper that I read about making inner generic crosses, meaning not just between different species, but also between different uh, genera. And you can do it with, with Incidium and Eugenia, for example, Eugenia, um, and then some other um, Myrtaceae or Myrtaceae uh, plants, but not, um, I think Aka, I think the Feijoa genus, it didn't really make very hardy crosses. They didn't really last or survive. Um, so I won't be including that uh, in the experiment. Okay, let's go back to the grow room. Um, so the rest is all by seed. So I guess first I'll talk about, I tried taking just regular Mexican cream guavas and trying different methods of germination. And I tried doing some uh, scarification because guavas, guava seeds are known to take a long time to, to germinate. So what I tried to do was test one of the, the bins I did seeds just soaked in, in water, uh, kind of in a damp paper towel. Another one, same deal, but I boiled them for five minutes because I read that that was a, I think that's this one, that was a, a way you can speed up the or improve the germination. And the last one I did scarification where you actually break the seed coat. Uh, and that, that method worked the best. I was able to get it to germinate in about 10 days. But the problem was I, I nicked I nicked them too hard. I took out full chunks of the seeds, so I wasn't very ginger about it. Um, there's nothing really alive in there right now. I did, I did pull out the few that germinated, but even you could see this one here in the center is trying to germinate, but uh, 
it, I clipped out the part that would probably have been a leaf or a root, so that one won't survive. But strangely enough, um, I guess if you're tuned into this channel or in, in this video, you're interested in like the details. But strangely enough, I was able to plant one of the seeds, and it's kind of hard to see, one of the germinating seeds That's, you can see some, some of the cotyledon leaves and then some true leaves coming in from the center, but that actually has no roots attached to it, no seed. It's literally just a stem and it's doing okay as long as I keep it moist. So I'm hoping that will root. Uh, and then in the future, I'm gonna not do as aggressive of scarification. It's just gonna be a little bit of a nick, a little bit of sandpaper to allow the water to infiltrate and germinate, but not taking out a full chunk the seeds kind of need that. So anyway, when I had a new batch of seeds come in of some other species, and I realized they really like it wet and warm. And so I have them bagged up, um, con there's condensation. They don't really need to be under the grow light right now, but there's extra warmth from that. There's heating mats, a couple heating mats under here. Um, and so I think they've only been in here for about a week, but I probably have to give it another week before they sprout. So this is a Pluma. This is a uh, another genus that's in, uh, let's see, Murdier, the Murdier genus. Uh, they're supposed to have very, a very small, but very good sweet fruit. This is the another Chilean guava, another Ugni fruit, but this one's a black fruiting variety, which is quite rare. Uh, this one's not related. Um, <clears throat> One is strawberry guava, a bit more common. Um, big red fruits, um, maybe not that big, but um, larger than the Chilean guava, uh, and should grow pretty well. And then, let's see, did we look at this one yet? Oh, this is the Mexican cream guava, the more standard Cidium. But I probably didn't need to grow that from seed because those are more readily available in the market to buy bought a tree. Anyway, so that's that's the the start of of my breeding project. The idea is to again to take some of the more really nice guava cultivars um, in the Cidium genus and cross them maybe with each other, uh, but then also with some of these more obscure. And I have more on the way that I found another. Um, Seed companies selling things like banana guavas, which I've never heard of before, narrow narrow leaf guava, and then a one from Brazil called oh, let's see, Psidium myrtoides, or something like that. And it's like a another kind of rare rainforest guava. That's uh, I've seen some reviews of its taste on on YouTube, and it's supposed to be really good. So. Stay tuned uh, for videos on how I'm gonna make these crosses. And, you know, we'll probably have a video in five to 10 years trying these crosses. Once they, once I, my crosses make seed, the seeds germinate and they grow into trees and then we can try the fruit together. Thanks for watching.